hello so I guess the thing that I'm doing now is making videos in my car whenever I need to talk about Nazis I didn't realize this was gonna be a genre on this channel sorry I won't be like focusing on the camera but I do need to get to work on time the only reason that I'm making this video in my car right now is that I have no other time to do it today and get it edited and have it up so it is this is literally a time optimization situation and if I want to arrive at work safely without killing myself, I probably need to focus on the road. So focus on my words and not on my face. So I was at ALA, which is the American Library Association annual conference this year. And before, I wasn't there on Saturday, but on Saturday there was a panel with Jason Reynolds and a librarian whose last name is Pearl. I don't know what her first name is because I've never heard of her. Um, which is kind of funny because like apparently she's a big deal. Well, um, and yet she has to have her foot surgically removed from her mouth at this point. I don't think she's apologized or made any kind of statement, but we'll see how it goes. So if you're not in the know, what happened essentially, she was on a panel about um, protecting our libraries from book bans uh, with Jason Reynolds, who is amazing. Like, I think Jason Reynolds is a really great guy. By all accounts, he's super nice, a very thoughtful, engaged person. And he gives up his time so freely. Like, I've seen him attend so many events that, like, he is not getting paid a huge amount of money for a lot of these things. Like, he's going to at-risk schools. He's talking to kids. He's doing a lot of the things. He's doing the work, and I really appreciate that. I think that he is... He is a really amazing young adult author, and I think we really need to be appreciating those where we can find them because a lot of people do suck, um, and we need to give people the benefit of the doubt when they are doing the work like he is. Um, so what happened basically was he was on this panel with this librarian whose last name is Pearl, and basically she made the point that like she kind of both sides of the Holocaust, which is hilarious because apparently she's also Jewish <laughs> and a librarian, so ethics. But she said that, uh, to paraphrase, that, um, you know, we can't censor materials that deny the Holocaust. It's the same as, like, book banning. Um, and it's, like, not within the scope of practice of us to, like, get rid of books that are Holocaust denial books. Uh, to which I say, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Um, this is something we actually discussed in a later panel, which, I mean, if you were at the panel, you probably saw me. Hello. I was the one who talked about Nazis and brought this up because uh, it kind of connects pretty intricately to um, materials that we're seeing that are transphobic because it is disinformation. There's a difference between misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is when you spread information unknowingly false. Um, and disinformation is when information is disseminated that is known to be false, but it is done so in order to misinform the public. So disinformation is malicious. It is an attempt to create an alternative narrative that harms people. So, you know, the disinformation that queer people are predators who will eat your children uh, like, and then misinformation is just, like, it doesn't have to be benign. Misinformation can be harmful, but it's the intent behind it that matters. So, for example, if I tell someone, oh, did you know that Gilbert Gottfried was a UN ambassador? Like, I, if I, if I think that's genuinely true, it's also not going to hurt anybody. But if I think that's genuinely true and I tell somebody, that's misinformation. But... It's not like I'm saying, did you know Gilbert Gottfried is a Nazi sympathizer? Like that, it, like, and I know that it's not true. He's, he's Jewish. <laughs> um, if I know that that's not true and I'm trying to do that to be harmful, to damage Gilbert Gottfried's credibility, that's disinformation. So you see the difference here. Although really bizarre examples. It is early in the morning. I'm on my way to work. Um, but the crux of this is, I'm tired. I'm tired of the, the Nazi shit. Um, when we say libraries have to be neutral, which is another huge problem that we're having right now, um, we aren't neutral. Libraries are inherently not neutral. It, like, because the idea being that libraries being politically neutral is fundamentally false. Like, libraries are about equity of access 
And there is a political party that shall remain nameless that wants to defund libraries, that wants to restrict libraries, that wants to privatize every industry in this country. Do you think that they will spare libraries? The answer is no. I have never met a librarian who has been working in the field for more than 10 years who is a Republican. I have met many young information scientists who are libertarians, but I've never met anybody who has spent their time in this field and really worked in it and helped people who could hold on to that value. Because our job is fundamentally about helping people and that's not what Republicans want to do. So that's my soapbox for that particular beast. But here we go. So when you say Holocaust denial materials, we can't censor them. First of all, there's a difference between censorship and collection development. Um, collection development is when you decide what's appropriate materials for your library and for your collection at large and for the audience you are serving. I don't think there's anybody who needs to read Holocaust denial materials for informational purposes who isn't doing it specifically for educational classes about Holocaust denial. Like that was a thing we brought up in, in one of our panels this week. But ultimately, Holocaust denial is not a neutral topic. First of all, there's just facts. The Holocaust happened. It is one of the most proven historical events. There's more proof of holo the Holocaust existence than the sinking of the fucking Titanic. Like, tell me that's a, that's a fucking lie before you tell me the Holocaust didn't happen. I will listen to you and see if your proof is any good. But, like, although it'd be really funny if you think about it. If the Titanic was just a giant insurance scam, that would be super interesting. Not the point. But my point here is that any librarian worth their salt would tell you that censorship is not the same thing as collection development. This is a, a non sequitur. And like saying that equivocating materials by, for example, Jason Reynolds, a black author whose materials are often on lists to get banned, Angie Thomas, whose materials are often on lists to get banned, um, queer authors whose, <laughs> whose materials are often on lists to get banned, these authors are not writing Holocaust denial. They are writing about racial injustice and police violence and like actual serious things that happen. And they're writing about like queer love, beautiful things in the world and, and black love and, and black families and like, and, and black pride. And like, that's, that's a beautiful thing in this world. Holocaust denial does not belong in the same discussion. So that's another thing that really incensed me because if we're talking about the way that we are going to be dealing with censorship in the next couple of years as the country like is pivoting toward Christo fascism, we have to think about the things that are actually going to be policed. And if anything, Holocaust denial will become more rampant because it is one of the most prominent forms of anti-Semitism, right? still so angry about this. One thing that really frustrated me is that Jason Reynolds is being the one who has who has been taking a lot of heat for this. He's been talking about it online and he's been in dialogue with, with Jewish writers and Jewish librarians about this and trying to come to, like, you know, trying to understand better. And it isn't his fault. Him not calling out a librarian who is in a senior position, who is on this panel with him, who is an expert, like, he didn't call her out because he doesn't have the information. Like, he's not in collections. He doesn't understand how it works. That's not his job. Now, just in as, as an example, um, I we have copies of Mein Kampf in the library. We have biographies of the Third Reich. We have various materials for historical purposes. And it is entirely within my prerogative to not get those people if I want another coworker to handle it but I am happy to do so because it is very much within my job description to help people. And if they are not being hateful to me, if they are not using any, any slurs, if they are not giving me any indication that they are hostile to me as a person because of who I am, I will help them. That is my job. However, it is not my job to look at the collection and think, hmm, can I put in some disinformation 
devalue my collection by adding things to it that will make it less accurate. Because part of collection development is removing materials that are wrong. We don't have computer manuals from 2007. You know why? And that's fucking relevant. They're not correct. Like, we don't carry, you know, revisionist history ass, bitch ass nonsense. That's not my fucking job. And we were talking a little bit about how this feeds into transphobia and how these pop psychology, pop biology books now, like Irreversible Damage and uh, the Helen Joyce book, and I do hesitate to bring up transphobia because I always get fucking dogpiled for it because there's so many fucking transphobes, but if we don't stand together, we're just all cowards. Like, I can't not talk about transphobia because people are going to be shitty about it. Um, but it, it, it's, it's one and the same. Like, all these transphobic works are Nazi eugenics shit, and they often do come with the caveat of, oh, and the Jews are doing it. The Jews are transing the kids. Like, they'll say, this and this Jewish billionaire is funding research, and this and this Jewish billionaire is funding, is offering funding to this queer charity. And, like, we've seen in the last couple years how this you know, scaremongering about queer people is now, you know, with the row repeal, um, leading into consideration about repealing gay marriage, um, which could put a lot of people at risk in terms of their legal rights over their children, to their spouse, to their, their livelihood. The point is that, um, libraries are not neutral spaces. We are information centers, we are community centers, and we are here to provide a service. And that service is informative. It is information. It is learning. We are not here to learn hate. I have ta I said this in, when I was uh, talking at a panel. I mean, I wasn't on the panel. I just got up and shot my mouth off um, when we had questions. Um, but I said, you know, it's my job to provide information and it's not my problem to provide disinformation. Because that's not what we do. We are we are here to to fight fascism. We're not here to aid it. Like that's the, you know what do you do? What do you, how can you fight ideas with better ideas? And like it, it is infuriating to me that any librarian would think we owe equal time to the the cheetahs eating people's faces off party. We fucking don't. We don't owe equal time to the fascists. I am not, as a Jew, about here to litigate my, 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 well, actually, I do deserve to exist. That's not my fucking job. I am not out here gonna be like, oh, having a, a polite conversation with people who want to kill me. That is not my, that is not my job. That is not what I'm gonna do. That is not what we're doing up in here. And it is disappointing. It is frustrating. I feel really bad that Jason Reynolds is the one who feels as though he has to take accountability for this because as already a marginalized person, like, it is his job very much to be aware of other people's oppression. Like, I'm not excusing marginalized people from being aware of oppression of other groups. Obviously, Jews and black people have a long history of standing together when it comes to racism and anti-Semitism, and, and Jews had a really huge part in the civil rights movement, but that doesn't exclude us from being racist. We have a huge racism problem in the Jewish community. And equally so, there is a huge anti-Semitism problem in the black community, particularly in the black American community. So. We need to focus on, you know, standing together and not being divided. And but it wasn't his fault. Like, the very most he could have done was say, well, I don't think Holocaust denial is ever the answer, and then moved on. Like, he didn't have the tools to have this conversation because she was supposed to be the one who knew better. <laughs> like, this, this middle-aged white Jewish lady is completely fucking up all of our shit. And poor Jason Reynolds is just out here trying to make things better. And I'm just like, oh, oh, you're doing, you're doing so good. I'm so happy. But please, please don't take the blame for this. Like, I'm glad that there is accountability being taken. But I'm, I'm not happy that it is, it is happening um, primarily on his side. Because that's not, that's not what, that's not what this is about. It wasn't about him. It was never about him. Um, so yeah. Nah, because fundamentally, um, this is about how libraries can stand against fascism. Book burning is fascism. Book banning is fascism. And when you start banning books, that's when 
it's already been happening. Like we know, we know that everything's already going on, but this is a serious issue. And I am not gonna pretend for anyone's comfort that book banning isn't going to harm us because it already is and it will more. Like we are we are standing at the at the precipice of a lot right now and the book banners are emboldened because they're getting what they want. All we can do is not let them. And I'm very privileged to live in a very liberal area, a very radical area. We don't have book banning problems mostly. Um, we don't have items challenged frequently with any kind of like, I don't, we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry about this stuff. I, I'm also not a school librarian, I'm a public librarian. So this is not really, a, this is not really my fight in a lot of ways. Like I don't, I don't have. This is, I'm not trying to steal anybody's valor here. Like I know how difficult school librarians have it, and I know how difficult librarians in rural and more conservative areas have it. Like it is, it is so hard for them, and I really feel for them, and I, I want to stand with them, without like acting as though like this is this is my big. Like I'm not out here like yeah, I I'm a hero. I'm just a person who really cares about this stuff and who wants kids to get what they need and who wants adults to have resources and who, who wants teens to be able to read books. Um, like all I want is for my patrons to be able to get whatever it is they need. And I can't do that if people are gonna try to take books out of my hands. I can't do that if suddenly we are, you know, in a police state where queer books no longer pass muster. I am not going to, you know, go quietly. And so what we really have to do, those of us living in more progressive areas, we need to boost the voices of people living in areas that are not as lucky, in places where there is more rampant disinformation, in places where there are worse problems. Um, we, like, for example, in Virginia right now, the lawsuit about Sarah J. Moss books, and there was a, was a queer book that was also part of that. Um, we need to lead the charge against these um, book banning extremists who are trying to keep books out of people's hands, who are trying to prevent information from spreading. Like, because there's nothing more dangerous than an idea. There's nothing more dangerous than an idea. And, like, people are so afraid. And they should be, because we are coming for them. We are not going to let them do this. And that's one of the, like, I mean, I have a lot of problems with ALA. I have a lot of problems with library associations in general, which I might make a smaller vlog about um, my issues when I attended ALA this year, because I did have a really good time. I had a wonderful time, but I did go to a lot of panels where the solution, it appeared, was nepotism. They were like, oh, this problem you have can be solved with nepotism. And that's not really helpful. <laughs> Um, but ultimately, like, one thing that I got out of all this is that in the panels where I was, I did feel represented and where I did feel present with everybody was, we're not going to take it. We are not going to take this lying down. We are, we are going to fight. Um, and that's reassuring. Like, I have allies in, in the fight against fascism. I have people who are at my side and who are not willing to take no for an answer who are not willing to go into that good night quietly like I I do feel empowered in that way and that's one thing that I really I, I did feel good about I, I, ALA and that and that one of those that's one of the ways that I felt good about ALA because I feel like I have comrades you know and that's a difficult it's been difficult to feel re I felt really alone in the past two years like as things have gotten worse and worse um, not just politically but also like you know, I, I know most people have been feeling pretty depressed. It's almost as though it's been a bad time. And a lot of frontline library workers like myself have been pretty fucking disenfranchised and having a lot of problems and not feeling heard. And it just felt so good to be surrounded by mostly like-minded people who just wanted to help people. That's what we want to do is want to help people. So that's my piece. Uh, Holocaust denial is bad censorship is bad but disinformation being removed from libraries is not censorship thank you for coming to my TED talk I hope this made sense um, 
I, I love each and every one of my librarian peeps. Y'all are my favorite people. Um, intellectual freedom is the bastion of a democracy. And I am in a profession that values that democracy. And in a profession that values that that camaraderie and that, that sisterhood, that brotherhood, that, that siblinghood. And I do feel in a lot of ways very lucky to have been able to attend. Uh, I do hope I get to go next year, we'll see. It depends on what job I'm in then. Um, I also have family in, in Chi-Town, so we'll see if that's, that's possible at all. But thank you so much for listening to my ranting. I hope it made sense. Um, I guess this is a new genre of YouTube videos. It's 2017 and we're yelling about Nazis in cars. <laughs> Actually, I feel like vlogging in your car was like very 2015, but you know, semantics. Um, but you know, I, I am really grateful to everybody who has spoken out about this, especially non-Jews who really are, I think, doing a lot of the work these days. I think that whenever I see non-Jewish people doing the work to combat anti-Semitism, it makes me feel really good, makes me feel really seen. Because, you know, it, it a lot of the times feels like an unpaid job that I also have to do, where I'm like, I'm just a person who has to combat anti-Semitism and Holocaust denial just on my off time. So having other people take on that burden when it, it's not directed toward them, it feels really good. It feels really empowering. It feels really like I am not alone. And that's, I think, really the important part of what ALA is supposed to be about is we, we're not alone. We're, we're working on this together. We are collaborating to build a better future. And that that is what it should be about. And not about Holocaust denial. <laughs> Bye!